Hello everybody, it's Claire from Sewing by Claire here and today we're going to be making Luna's t-shirt dress. Now it's actually in the first book of the Luna Lapin, oops, pattern paper there, Luna Lapin book and it is actually this dress here which has got the lovely bow on the front of it. It's quite a short dress for Luna but that's fine, we don't mind that um, and this is the dress that we've made today. It's got a lovely big bow on the front with her little ties there, short sleeves, and then the dress. The, the lace is from her French knickers, so they're, they, they're a little bit longer. And then buttons on the back with press studs underneath for closing. So I hope that you enjoy watching as I sew this dress, and I hope I give you some tips for making your own. Now, one thing that I have changed on this is that I have, on the inside of this dress, Rather than do the bias binding edge, I've actually added what's called a facing. Now, I go through that in the video, how to do that, but also at the end, there's a recap as well. So if you've never worked with a facing before, so you don't know how to draft one, because you will have to draft your pattern pieces to do it, but it's really easy, honestly, and I'll just take you through it step by step. Then um, when you've watched the video, just at the very end, there's just a quick recap on there as to how to do that. Um, if you prefer to use the bias bound method, you might need to find a different video because I've only covered how to use the facing in this one because I do think it's easier, especially if you're a beginner sewer. So although you have to draft your pattern, I think the actual execution of it to get it to fit and get this really lovely finish and neckline edge um, is worth the extra time. So hopefully you like this dress, hopefully you enjoy the video and have a great day everybody. Here we go. So go ahead, find the... Um the pattern pieces in the back of the book and trace those off. There's a video on my channel of how to trace off your pattern pieces. So just do it onto some tissue paper, something like this, which is lovely. And then I want you to choose your fabric. And you know that I've spoken before about scale when you're choosing um, fabrics for Luna. And I've chosen this little um, floral ditzy for this pattern, which fairly closely re represents the um, same design on the dress that Sarah's made for her Luna lap, lap in. You can of course go online and, and pick up the remake kits and pick your fabric from there if you want to support the author. So as I say, make sure that you've traced off all of your pattern pieces and cut those out. Make sure that all of your pieces are cut on straight of grain. So follow the selvage edge. Again, there's another video for in my um, skill builder series about straight of grain. So do that as well in the selvage edge so that you know where, where you're working to um, and make sure that you mark all of your notches, your little um, zigzag, um, zigzags, little triangles um, into the fabric because they will help be your clues for how to fit the fabric jigsaw together. So once you've got to that stage then we're going to start and make the dress. Now in the dress it does call to cut out this piece here which is a long rectangle and this is um, a binding for going around the neckline. Now, bi bias bindings can be really fiddly to try and sort out, never mind about on this smaller size um, dress, really, for your Luna. So I'm trying something new, and we'll see how it works. So I've actually cut out a front facing, which is this bit here. And if I just show you, this fits on to this piece is on the fold, cut on the fold. This fits onto the neckline of the dress piece. So it goes, just follows the shoulder line. This is where the arm side is. And then the fold line is here. So when I fold out the other part, it will cover this. So I have just gone down approximately one inch, just down. So I followed all of the pattern markings down for one inch and then just curved it round towards the shoulder so it's just pretty much to the edge of there. I've then done the same on the back piece as well. Where's my back facing? Why is it you can never find what you want? Okay and I've cut two of those out as well so that matches exactly there as well. And what I'm going to do is join these at the shoulder seam and then fit it onto the inside of the front and that should eliminate the need for the facing but we'll try it and see because I think that could be a, a much less fiddly way especially for you beginners of how to neaten off the neck edge of this dress but let's give it a go let's have a go and see we like to just book the trend sometimes don't we and see how things go it's a lovely cute little dress um, and I'm sure we'll we'll get on well with it together so let's get stitching so when you come to look at all your pieces you should have the back piece here um, on cut out in your fabric the front you need the bow 
you need the sleeve and this is the collar piece that I was talking about which we, we may not use if, if my facing idea doesn't work then we'll we'll revert back to this piece but this is the collar piece so that's only a small piece of fabric that we might not need to use and then I've got my pieces for my facing I've got one piece for the front and I've got two pieces cut out for the back facing so that's what you need to do to make sure so make sure you've got all your pattern pieces together and you've got your fabrics cut out and then we'll get actually on with the sewing so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my front facing that I've just made if you're not making the using the facing then you can skip this bit and the back facing and what I want to do is you want to look for the right angle here at the back of the back facing because that's going to be the centre back so separate these two out and you can see there's a curved line there and a straight line here. So the curved line goes to the shoulder on one side with the heart, um, straight bit into the right angle bit into the centre. And put a pin in that just to hold that together. And then we're going to do the same with the other one. The other one's going to go on the shoulder here. Now it's very important if this is going to fit to use the same seam allowance as you're going to be using on your dress shoulder seams because we want the inside curve to be identical. So all I've done is got my machine set up, I've got white thread in to match the, the garment and I'm just going to use a straight stitch, at normal dressmaking 2.2, quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to back tack at the start in the beginning as you would do normally. So let's just do that. if you prefer hand stitching then you can hand stitch these no problem at all just where I'm machine stitching you would just um, hand stitch using a back stitch or a running stitch back stitch is probably better okay, let's do this other side here just gonna fold that piece of facing out of the way so I've got a, a good run my fabric's just starting to poke up at the back there because it's just a small piece. So I'm going to put my needle down into my work and I'm just going to sort this out because this is what happens sometimes with our smaller pieces. And if I use my awl, I can just ease it up at the back so it's sitting straight. And then put the, the press the foot back down again. And then what I'm going to do is just going to press these open now. Because it's such a small piece, I can probably just finger press it. There we go. Now, I'm expecting to have to cut some of this neck edge off at the end, but I've saved it to the end because that gives us enough to work out rather than me guess it and have to do it again. So again, just finger press that straight. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to neaten these edges on the edge of here. So Sarah suggests using a zigzag stitch. So I'm going to do that the same. If you've got an overlocker, you can overlock it. And that'll just stop it, stop the edges from fraying for you while it's being in use. So just remember to stop on a, a zag when you've got your fabric in your work, in your, um, your needle in your fabric. And just pivot and just turn it round as you're going. And if you've watched my skill builder on the zigzag seam finish, then this is a good one to use. Or you could have used the pinked edge as well if you wanted to. So don't forget to look at those if you've not had, if you're a beginner and you've not done many seam finishes yet. Then it'll give you some more tools to use when you're making your garments. So as I say, we've just been around there and just neaten that off. Just trim our threads. There's a little bit there where I've not quite caught it. So I'm just going to trim it back just to the 
edge of the zigzag. And if you've got any little whiskers just off the edge, just take those off as well at this stage, just to make it look nice and neat. Okay, I'm not going to zigzag the inside edge because that will be sewn. So as you can see, that now should follow the same curve as the dress when we make it. So that's what it looks like on the inside. Well, that seam allowance is closed up when I've sewn it, but that, ideally you'd have them both pressed out like this. Okay, so that's the facing. So I'm just going to put that to one side for now, along with the pattern pieces for that. And we are now going to move on to the back of the dress. And what Sarah wants us to do first is she wants us to neaten the two edges of the back of here. So just off camera, I have zigzagged the edges of these of these two. This is the back pieces that I've just um, zigzagged here. So what we need to do now is sew up the centre seam to the point of the notch. Now, because we've zigzagged, we've obviously covered up the notch. So I'm just going to lay my pattern piece back on again and measure up from this bottom edge to the point where it would have been. And I'm just going to put a pin in just to remind me where that is. And the seam that we have to sew here is three quarters of an inch. So what we're going to do now, just make sure your hems match up. It's not wanting to sit nicely, is it? Okay. So neck edge is matching, hem edge is matching. And, and you have to just be careful with the zigzag because it does sometimes just bring it up. So just give it a little tug if you need to, just to straighten that edge out. It's not a bias edge, so we don't need to worry too much about it. And we're now going to sew three quarters of an inch in from that edge. Now, it does mean that we have actually um, already taken in a little bit because the, some of the fabric has folded over. So if I do half an inch from that edge, then that will be about right, I believe. So I'm just going to use my Frixion pen just to give me a little bit of a starting point and indicator. So I can just iron out. You can use chalk if you wanted to. And I'm going to start that seam allowance you can use the edge of your um, fabric on your measure on your base plate as well for your machine just to make sure they keep that straight so i'm at the pin there with the notch and i'm just going to now do this same seam all the way down just reverse lock in those stitches Done. So there we are, we've got our nice seam sewn in there. So once you've sewn your seam at the required amount, what you're going to do then is you're going to open your two dress pieces out on your cutting mat, your working work surface, and you're going to finger press those all the way over to one side. Now these are going to go right up to the notch on the, on the top of the collar. So there's a notch there and a notch there. So that's fairly straightforward and then you, that's what we're going to do. Um, but what we want to do then is we want to fold on the left hand side. We're just going to fold this neatened edge back to the stitch line that we've just done. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a little placket at the top here. And I'll show you in a second. Because in folding it over halfway back again, what we create is this little placket here. Look, can you see? So we've got a folded edge there on the edge of the, the dress. And we've got the wider one there. So one's going to sit underneath the back of the other, which is going to give us a nice, neat finish on the back of this dress. Now, it doesn't say to stitch that down, but do you know what? I think I'm going to, because we know where it needs to go to. And when it needs to be neatened off, then um, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm, even if I just do big stitches just to tack it, and I can always take them out if I find out that it's not needed. But I think by doing that, it will... And I'm just going to go down to the notch here. You shouldn't see it on the right side of the dress, but it will just help keep that in place for us. So I'm just going to fold that back. So I've got 
the other bit folded back out of the way so I know where to stop as well. what we've done then is we've just created this little placket and that's where our press studs are going to go when we finish this dress off. So the top bits will be finished off inside the collar but just for now that means we've got this lovely neat little finish just here where the buttons will or the press studs will go on there just to keep that nice and neat on the back. So I hope that made sense just to just to show you what it looks like from the inside. So we've still got the full seam allowance on the right hand side piece of the dress just there that's just going to sit flat against the right hand side but this other piece here has just been folded back to the stitching line and pressed obviously I've just finger pressed it but you could press it with the iron and then what I've done is I've just stitched down on here just on the very edge and it's just given me that row of stitching but as you can see when this is lying together if I put it that way you might be able to see better you can see this is going to have a slight overlap which means that the button's going to sit very nicely on there when that comes time for closing. So that's what I've done, done just there. I haven't stitched it all the way down. I don't think it needs it. it just I've just stitched as far as pretty much the um, notch was. So that's the back of the dress. And what we've got to do now is we need to get the front of our dress, which has been cut on the fold. Take our pattern piece off, make sure that we've marked our notches on our sleeves. Here's the front of our dress, a bit difficult to see when the pattern's also the same. And we're going to match these up. So if we lay this on the front of there, so the front of the garment and the back of the centre back of the garment is the same. And then we're just going to match these shoulders up just here. And put a pin in there. And a pin in here. And then we're just going to sew across these two with our quarter of an inch seam allowance just make sure they don't twist because we've only got one pinning because it's only such a short seam they can sometimes twist so I start and stop needling my work before we take the pin out so it doesn't jump slightly doesn't it when it's only got one pin in that's better just smooth it down with your fingers pin out we don't sew over our pins if we can help it because if you bash your pin it can damage your needle and it can also put the timing out on your sewing machine so we try not to do that. So we've just got our two shoulder seams sewn just here. And now we can open the dress out still and we're going to now we're just going to finger press those seams open or you can press them on your with your iron. But on this 100% cotton it does tend to finger press quite nicely. Oops. Such little seam allowances aren't they? Okay. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to put our sleeves in. So the secret to putting a sleeve in is matching up your notches. So make sure you've got your notches marked. We'll take our pins out for now. Put a piece to one side for another day. Okay. Now, let me just show you on here because we've, if you look, this curve here is different to the curve here and that's very common on a sleeve it isn't on a t-shirt t-shirt sleeves or sweatshirt sleeves tend to be the same either both sides but generally speaking you will have a front and a back sleeve the way you tell the difference is that your front sleeve has just one notch and there's one notch in there 
and the back of the sleeve will have two notches. So that's why it's a really important to have those notches. So when we then offer this up to the dress, let's turn it over so that it's right sides together because that's what we need to be. We can see there's one notch here on the front of our dress. So we find the one notch on our dress. Now, if we put those right sides together and the notches are on the wrong side, we know we've got the wrong sleeve. So we go back again and find the other sleeve and there's our notch and there's our single notch. And we're going to match those two match points together. So notches are going to go on top of each other because they actually mark the placement as well as the front and the back. So yeah, I've got my notches together and that should match then at the underarm seam here. Let's put the pin in here at the start and the pin in just by that notch. Now the only thing you can do with, with sleeves is just take your time. Um, sometimes you do have to have what's called easing. Sometimes because you're doing different curves, you just have to take your time. They can be a little bit fiddly. So again, let's go back to this other side here now and let's match up our two notches here. So there's the two notches and they're going to go onto there. So put a pin there, just hold it with your fingernails. Make sure it's lying flat. And again, we're going to just match that underarm and again, it matches perfectly, which is great. Means my tracing was on point. And then we're going to then just match this edge in here, just kind of easing it in because they want to go different ways, these curves do. And we're trying to get them into going flat. So we're trying to get the, the top of the sleeve head in. And it does take a little bit of fiddling around to do, but it will go in eventually. So just keep going. So let's just do that to one side there. And then that's and, and the best way of doing it is making sure that your cut edges are together. Because if the cut edges are together, then it should then fit in properly. And then as we sew around there, that's going to come open and that's going to fix that. Now I'm going to sew this with my sleeve because as we can see when my sleeve is folded out here, oh, just rearrange this one slightly. When your sleeve is actually on the, on the bed of your sewing machine, this bit here is going to be flat. Let's put one at the top on that seam allowance just there. It's difficult because it's just wanting to stand proud. This is going to feel frustrating to you at first, but you will get it. So what you're trying to aim for is that your sleeve will be flat like that. And we're going to put that down against our sewing bed. And then we're going to manoeuvre the fabric around here as we sew in order that we don't sew any tucks into the actual fabric itself. And I'll show you some tips of how we can do that. But as I say, just make sure your cut edges are together because that will help you. Um, make sure it's right and sometimes they when you pull it straight there they're, they, they'll lie flat but when you've got it pinned they don't look like they want to. So we're going to start at this underarm edge just here. Quarter of an inch seam allowance again. Start and stop and reverse and then needle into your work to hold it down. So let's go up to that pin not over it and then take that out because the needle down anchors that for anchors the dress and the and the fabric for us against the bed of the sewing machine. So let's keep going around now gently. Just if you've got a speed control, turn that down. This isn't a time for zooming. I'm going to take this pin out just here. So far, so good. That should all fit in quite nicely. And we can see we've got all of this fabric here that we're trying to manoeuvre around. But we will, don't you worry. Just take our time and take the next pin out and I can find it. They do hide, don't they, in the folds? And I'm just going to lift my knee, press the foot up and just gently just make sure that these threads and these fabrics are just okay. Because sometimes just by moving some of the bulk of the fabric towards the back, you can just manage to get your seam to be right. Okay. Use your awl if you need to, just to hold things in place. Let's 
them again here. So let's just put the needle up and let's just move some of that little the fullness of that fabric back. The most important thing is that we don't get any puckers in this as we're sewing it. A few stitches at a time and the needle back up again. Take that one out and just move some of the bulk back. So what I'm trying to make sure is that just immediately in front of my, my presser foot, all my fabric is, is lying pretty flat. Because you can see the um, little folds as you get towards them. And just by manoeuvring them out of the way sometimes, even if it's just by a stitch at a time, you can get these to lie in flat. If you wanted to tack it in first, you can tack it in first. If you just make your tacking stitches slightly bigger than your quarter of an inch, then you should be able to that should make it just nice for you and you shouldn't have to um, have too much trouble getting those tacking stitches out at the end. So it looks like I've got a fold come in there, so I'm just going to lift my presser foot, just straighten the fabric out again. And here, we're just off on the corner there, so I'm just going to match those corners up and hold it together with my awl. Pin it out. Get to the edge. Keep your fingers crossed for me, folks. hope that we've managed to do this. If not, I'll show you how we can correct it. So I'll take those bits of thread off. So first thing I want to check is here. So we can see we've got our sewn edge here and that's all nice and neat and no creases. If we now fold it round to the other side, we can now check this side and I'm looking for any puckers or creases on the edge and you know what we've taken it nice and slowly and we've managed it now if there was a pucker on either the sleeve or the um or the main dress body whether it's the front or the back what you would do then and, and maybe i have to show you again on the on when i do the next one because you know there's no guarantee that we all get it right first time if you've got a, a um a tuck just identify where the tuck is take out the stitch there and a couple either side then just Massage the fibres with your fingers so that they lie flat and then just redo that bit. Don't take out the whole sleeve where it does fit unless your, your notches aren't matching. But as I say, just take out a stitch right on top of the um, pucker that you've got and then a couple of stitches either side and just enough just to make it lie flat and then you can come back to it. But that one's gone in really nicely actually. So I'm very happy with that. We can see our seam there and there's no puckers. So fingers crossed. Let's repeat the process for the other side. So we now know that we've only got one sleeve left, so we know that's the right way round with our tucks, so um, with our notches. So let's match up the first notch against the first notch, and they match on top of each other perfectly. And I need to make sure that I'm pinning from the other side because I'll take my, I'll sew it from the other side again, like this one, being as it went well for me. And then we're going to match that at the under edge seam as well making sure our raw edges are together. Let's make sure we can see what I'm doing. Yes, I think we can. And then we're going to go directly now to the other side. So we don't carry on now moving that across because it's we've got to match our match points first and the match points are our notches. So put our double notch on top of our double notch and put a pin in because that's a jigsaw puzzle match piece, isn't it? And then we're then going to put the other piece on the other end and that should match perfectly there and it does. So there we go. And because these have been cut out the same as the other one, then we should be fine. So now what we've got to do is try and match these two edges together. So I've turned it back round again now so I can control it this little bit better. And what I'm going to do is matching the um, raw edges together and just kind of making sure the fibres are lying flat on my with my fingers and the warmth from your fingers will help just this lie flat and then I'm going to the other side now just pull it out to make sure that it's going to actually sit straight for you so these little garments are really fiddly it's much easier putting garments into children's or or adult wear honestly and then we've got this this seam here at this point is a little bit longer than the other because of the way it curves but try and match those edges up if you can smooch the difference either way keep the seam allowance open if we can do so that'll help it just lie flatter and then at the quarter inch point these should fit together just nicely 
we know it's possible because we've done one already so let's just hope so if we look on the other side of our top oh, look at this you see I've pinned from the other side no that's right I do want to pin from that side oh sorry so I'm just going to move the pins that I've got on the sleeve edge to the other way around because that's I want to sew with the sleeve down to my um, machine because I know that should be flat Okay, so we've got all of our pins on the same side. So when we turn it round here now, we can see that if we just smooth out those pins, we've got it pretty much straight. Just that one there is just a little bit of a tuck, can you see? So I'm just going to take that one out for the moment. Use my fingers just to ease those fibres together a bit better and put my pin back in again. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. So I'm going to put that side down against my sewing machine bed. And we're going to take our time doing exactly the same thing as we did before. I'm going to back stitch at the start and finish. And then needle in our work so that we can start to remove our pins. We're just making sure that all of this is just sitting nice and flat against the bed of our sewing machine. And just follow the curve round. Needle, keep your needle in your work and then just lift your presser foot up if you need to just move the the fullness of the fabric back towards the area that you've already sewn hard to describe some of these things sometimes but hopefully it's obvious from what you can see keep coming around a bit more to near the other pin let's just lift our presser foot up again we'll take our pin out and just make sure that all of these edges are staying straight sleeve just pulling forward a little bit so I'm just going to pull it from underneath to make that straight and just my all will help me That's it. and again I'm just going to pull the fullness back to the to the back of the garment make sure those edges are lining up as best as you can do And even if you just have to take a couple of stitches forward and then stop and re realign it, just do that. There's no, there's no limit on the number of times you can stop and start on doing something like this. The fiddlier the, the, um, the, fiddlier the garment or the thing you sew in, the slower you tend to want to be going. And again, let's just start and stop at the end here. and just take off our threads put some bin. let's have a look again so sleeve again I'm happy with this I can see that that's a nice smooth edge with no puckers keep your fingers crossed and here we've got the same again we might have a slight pucker there just turn it around to the side yeah we've got a slight pucker just there that I'm not happy with but the rest is pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is let's, let's do exactly what I said to you to do. So identify where your pucker is and just use your quick unpick and take out the stitch immediately on top of that. And then just take out a couple of stitches, oops, either side. And that should just release the fabric enough that when you pull on it, it should just, should just then lie flat for you. And all I'm going to do is put this back into the machine again with my sleeve flat against the bed of the machine. You can see where you've got your gap in your stitches. Line your needle up. Forward and back again on those stitches. Oops. Right there, look, just redone those bits there. Oops, get inside our dress, fold our sleeve out, and there we go. That's that's corrected that little pucker that we had. So I'm happy with that now. So what we're going to do now is we are going to fold up the sleeve by a quarter of an inch and press it. Should have done this before, sorry folks. 
and then we're going to then do it again. Now, it's up to you. I don't always like the finish on these kind of sleeves. Because I think you can see the, a, a bit of a bulk at the edge. But I'll show you how we, how we do that, deal with that. So for now, I'll do it the same way Sarah's done it. And then we'll then... So this is Sarah Peel I'm talking about, the author of the book. So just right on the edge, we've just taken it a quarter of an inch. Start and stop. This is just to put the cuff edge on the edge of the sleeve again on the other side just a little little cuff edge there just to make it all sit nice if you've got any threads just snip those off you want to have those just coming out of your top you've got one of those little mini irons and little wool pressing mat they're very handy to have aren't they so they haven't got one of those but um as I say, the heat of my fingers is just, just enough just to hold that for me. Just make sure that it's staying under, behaving itself. So I can't see if my fingers are in the way, can you? of our sleeves there on both of those two. Okay. So the next thing then that we're going to do is we are going to, in fact I think we're going to put the facing on the back of our dress now because I think that'll be easier put in in the flat rather than once it's all sewn together. So what I'm going to do now is get my little facing piece that we sewed and we're going to put that right sides together on top of the dress and we're going to match the shoulder seams together. And put a pin in. I'm going to leave the dress on the bottom and have the facing on the top. Just match that. And if your seam allowances are the same, which hopefully they will be, then that should be the same. Now because I've sewn this one flat, ideally I would have sewn it open. But, so I'm going to keep it flat, but if yours is open then press it open press it open, sew it open to when you sew your dress on and this facing is just going to sit on the inside of the dress and just hide those raw edges. Okay. Make sure that if you, where we've got the seam allowance folded over, that stays folded over when we put our seam allowance. So we've got the, the, the big piece, haven't we, folded over to where that second notch is which is there. So we have got a little bit of a, a longer bit here, but we're not going to worry too much about that. Put that in there. And on here, we can take it right to the edge there because we know that we've neaten that edge already. So what we're going to do now is just going to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around here and attach this facing to this collar edge. Just keep your back bit out of the way. Hold on to your threads. You don't get a nest. Needle in your work so that that anchors it down for taking your pins out. And don't forget to stop and to pivot as you need to. So need, leave your needle in your work and lift your presser foot and then you can move your, your fabric round. Just nice and steady. Keep your back bit out of the way. Don't go over your needles, your pins. Needles, pins. I do know the difference. And again, just push that pin head in. So. See, it's starting to bunch up. So just by lifting that that presser foot, it just eases it out so that it can. And I think this is going to work, I think, better than trying to fiddle with the bias binding. So, 
that's possibly the best way of doing it. So I will just go over that how to do a facing at the end for you again for anybody who needs it. Obviously, if you already have worked with facings before and you know how to do it, then you can skip that bit. So I'll save it to the end rather than pop it in the middle. So again, just making sure the edges are matching up and that we've not pulled it too tight. this edge straight on at a right angle. Let's take our threads out. Snip those off and stick the smarting threads off. There you go. Oops. And here we've got our little faced edge. Now what we're going to do now is just to neaten this and make, because it's a very curvy edge and we want this to sit nice and flat, is I want you to take your snips or your scissors and then you see where your um, edge is here where you've stitched. We're going to stitch just to about a thread or two away from that curved edge, from that stitched edge, sorry. So just up to, so you're just releasing that so that you can just pull that flat and these will open out as we turn it round. This is an important step on any curved edge and in actual fact it's going to be one of my future skill builders is how to do this all neatly. haven't got round to filming that one yet, but it's on its way folks. So up to, if you can see, but not through that um, stitched edge. If you go through it, just put it back in your sewing machine and just go a hair's breadth again uh, or a couple of threads just the other side of, of where you've snipped through and that will just reinforce that seam for you again for that facing. So do this on all curved edges. If it's a straight edge, you don't need to. So where it goes straight edge towards the end of the facing here, you don't need that so much. But can you see how when you fold that out, that allows the fabric to fold out? And then what we can do then is we can just finger press this open. So we're going to press the seam allowance, pressing the seam allowance towards the facing. And then we're going to use one of my other skill builder lessons, which we've just done, which is understitching, because as I said in that video, that actually helps this facing lie flat and not keep popping out. It's a really good tip for if you're doing any dressmaking for yourself or for children um, or for anybody else, then it's a really useful tip. So that's what we're going to do now is we're just going to go in and we're just going to understitch here. So we're attaching these raw edges here onto the facing only so you're literally going to be if I do it here you can see the difference between the green and then this fabric here that's our stitched edge originally and I've got my seam allowances pushed up towards the facing and I'm just going to stitch literally an eighth of an inch away from this sewn edge that I've already done and it's just going to catch that down so that when we then roll this over to sew it and um, just uh, roll this over and finish it off it's going to fit just really beautifully so that's what we're going to do next. It's a little fiddly because it's on, on, a, on a curve, but you can, you can do it. You just have to just do a bit at a time. So just hold it flat with your fingers. And actually, I think I'm going to put my needle into position number two, which is over to the edge there, and use this part here on my, on my um, presser foot as my guide against the stitched edge I've already done. So I'm going to hold on to my threads, a couple of stitches, Starting back and then just keep doing that all the way through. Needle down in the work, you press that up and then we're just going to flatten this out in front. So you're just doing like a centimetre at a time as you go forward, making sure that that seam allowance, you can feel it with your finger, make sure that seam allowance is pressed forward towards your facing and it is, that's fine. So this is called understitching and I really like the effect that this gives. Not all patterns tell you to do it, but even if the pattern doesn't tell you to do it and you're using a facing, I would always do it. It's just starting to move forward. So as I say, just keep stopping and starting, stopping and starting and, move, and roll your dress round as you're going. 
Just keep pulling that facing away from the main body of the dress as you go. Oops. Straighten it all out. Just make sure that we don't lose that edge as we're going to the very end. A bit fiddly as you can see, but then it's no fiddlier than the bias binding would have been. threads. Hopefully this is all making sense to you. And then what we can see, can you see that? So let me just show you just close to the camera. So there was our original, oh, probably on the back better, so there's our original stitching line for the seam and then eighth of an inch in, it's just catching those seam allowances down. So if we look over here on the other side, all you can see is that row of stitching on the, on the facing and then when we turn this round, to the inside of the garment, that edge is going to fit beautifully. And again, I'm just going to finger press this for now. But it gives you a really, really nice finish without the faff of having to sort out um, bias binding. Okay, I'm going to just neaten those edges up in a minute. Let's take off this thread here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fold in that little bit of bias bind in there so that it's flush with the edge here. And you can, I'm probably going to hand sew that just neatly doing a ladder stitch because that'll put that nice and neat in there. And then again here, I'm just going to, I'm going to take some of this off because it's now too long. I haven't taken much off, but just enough that it doesn't make too much bulk. And again, I'm going to fold that in on itself and then fold that down and that's going to just give us a little edge just there. The other thing I'm going to do is just put a couple of stitches to hold this. So if you press that flat so that the edge of the facing is against the edge of the shoulder there, I'm just going to put a couple of stitches there and that'll just hold that facing down on the inside. So this is what it looks like from the, ins from the outside. Lovely, lovely, neat neckline edge there. And then on the inside, what you'll see is when this is pressed down, is you'll just see this neatened little, little facing that will just be stitched to the top of the shoulder seams on either side. And then it's just going to be neatened on the edge. So let me just go and do that bit and I'll come back to you. So let's just do a little quarters knot. So we put our thread over the top of our needle and hold it with our thumb three times round, swap it over and then just pull our needle through and that holding onto those wraps and it just puts a nice little knot just in the end of our thread. And we can just snip off that little bit of thread that's proud of that knot to make it nice and neat. Go back to our facing edge. I think what I'm gonna do first is just attach these little bits down here. So making sure that it's smooth on the and it's lying flat and those two seams there should just lie flat on top of each other and I'm just going to put my little needle in there and just take a little stitch and really all I'm doing is really just attaching the facing just to the seam allowance at the top of the shoulder so that's just and you literally only need three or four stitches just to hold that down so just stop it from flicking out when, it, when we don't want it to. Same with same with when we're doing dressmaking as well. So we just put a few stitches in. Okay. And then the other side here, let's put that knot again. So put our thread over the top of our needle, hold it with our thumb. One, two, three wraps. Swap it over. Pull those wraps down to the bottom. Lovely little knot, neat little knot. Snip off the end there. And then here we're going to do the same thing here. So let's fold the so make sure that we've got that nice edge on the inside of, on the outside of your dress with the shoulder seam. And then just put those seam allowances on top of each other. Bury your knot underneath your seam allowance and just come up into the facing 
on on adult clothing or children's clothing would actually interface the facing as well but we don't need to do that on Luna's clothes it would add a stiffness that we don't really need but when you're dealing with bigger items it's always good to have that so just a few slit stitches on there and take that off as you can see that's just anchored it down so it's not going to go anywhere and it's invisible on the right side of the garment so you can't see any stitches there so let's have a look at these ends again as i just said earlier a little bit of thread just there standing a little bit proud let's take rid of that while we can see it okay so all i'm going to do with the end of here is i've made sure i've got a nice edge on my neck and then this little excess piece i'm just going to fold it inside in line with the folded edge that we had previously and i'm just going to hold that down oh and i've not got a hold on a second let's put a pin in just to hold it because it's nicely positioned forgot to put a knot at the end of my thread and there we go and what I'm going to do now is if I bury my if I go with my thread right up inside the facing behind this bit here and start in this top corner that means that when I pull my thread through it's going to hide that little bit of thread Come on, go through. Oh, it doesn't want to do it now. Tab said that that's what it's going to do. I've obviously caught some threads. Oh, well, right. Take the thread end off. Things don't always work to plan, do they, when you're on camera? So I'm just going to take a little bite of the facing, a little bite of the folded edge of the fabric, and I'm just going backwards and forwards and just securing this together. so it gives us a nice edge there we go apologies if you can hear any noise in the background my husband's on a conference call real life can't stop just for youtube videos can it unfortunately let's just stitch this down now hopefully those of you that have made this before hopefully you feel this is going to be as good a finish as a um, bias bound edge but for those of you who've tried this dress before and who've struggled with the bias binding then hopefully it's a bit of a little trick that will hopefully mean that you're happier and it makes it easier for you to sew just press use the board to press that down it just needs a few stitches just to hold it down and snip off the thread really close so we've got a nice little neat edge there And again on the other side, oh, let me do my um, knot first so we don't forget that. There we go. Snip off the edge in anticipation. Okay. So again, we're at the top on the other side now. We're going to fold it in towards the facing and then fold it down against that folded edge. And that should just give us a really nice finish. And again, I'm going to thread my needle inside the facing come out at the top corner first to hide that knot yeah that one's worked this time and then we're just going to go backwards and forwards right on the very edge there we go and then just keep neaten it just take this all the way down just to neaten it off You can see it's just just you might see just a little couple of stitches on the front there, but all in all, it's fairly neat. And it's a handmade garment as well, isn't it? So we want it to look. We're not trying to hide stitches completely. We just want to make sure that they're as neat as possible. So just taking just literally just a very couple of threads, and then a couple of stitches back up here again. Going through just the facing, not going through the top of the fabric, just through the facing. And then we can snip that off and that should anchor that down. 
So there we go, we've got our lovely, neat edge there on our dress. Hopefully you agree, that's nice and neat. That'll fold over there with a little custard on the top. And that's just a different way of finishing that neckline edge with that facing on the inside there. Just fits nice and neatly, just straight down there. Okay, so the next run home was straight, folks, really, until we start on the bow. So for the actual dress it itself we are, what we're going to do now is we're going to match our underarm seams. And we're going to push the seam allowances in towards the, um, in towards the dress. Oops. We're going to pin it, make sure you can see what I'm doing. We're going to match our underarm seams, as our sleeve seams here as well. And put a little pin in there just to hold those together. And then we're going to match our hem down the bottom because those are all our match points. And because we cut these all out beautifully, then they all match up. And if your hem isn't right at the bottom, you know you might have stretched one of your edges sometimes so then it's about trying to ease it and ease it back in again so you can sew it so that's one side so let's do one side at a time so i'm going to sew across here at quarter of an inch seam allowance when i get absolutely on top of this stitch line here i'm going to put my needle in and then i'm going to pivot so then i can change direction to come down here so start and stop here across to this point here needle in the work keep it in pivot your work and then change direction to come down so let's just have a go at this. I'm going to change this back to a number one stitch. I'm changing my needle position. All my seam allowances are towards my sleeve. Needle in the work, take the pins out as we go. Go nice and slowly to that point. Hopefully you can see where I've got my pivot in. And then now we're going to just change that direction straight on top of the that sewn seam before. And of course you can neaten these edges if you wanted to, either with your overlocker. Or you can do a zigzag seam if you want to. one seam just sewn down there let's do the other one now so let's match our underarm seam first and pushing our seam allowances towards our sleeve that's the first important match point then the edges of our sleeves and then again down to the hem and then once we've done that we can then couple of pins just down this straight edge just to keep us all together making sure our, our raw edges match let's do this side so as we get close to that just take that pin out just do two, a couple of stitches, one more. There we go, straight on top of that line of stitching. And then that's going to then take us down here. say if you wanted to I probably will do just do a zigzag just down this edge just here just to neaten it off
grey whiskers just just take those off with your snip or your scissors just to make sure it's a nice edge just do the other side whiskers let's just take those off making sure we don't snip through the threads of our zigzag okay so if we just turn our little dress around the other side I think the only thing that we've got left to do now is um to do the bow so let's oh now we've got to hem hem first Claire trying to rush ahead there we go I'm going to give this a press as well at the same time so here we have our little dress with our sleeves all nicely set in. If you wanted to, what you could do is just, and I think I might just put a couple of stitches just to neaten this edge. So just what I want to do is just push that seam allowance for the underarm seam just to the back of the dress. Just stops those seam allowance and then I'm just going to put a couple of stitches in just on this very edge here. Not with a zigzag though, hold on a second. Oh, everybody needs a quick unpick every now and again. Right. So let's go back again. Let's just put this underneath here. I'm just doing a couple of stitches forward and back. And that'll just hold that seam allowance just down for me. Obviously, you can do a little hand stitch if you want to as well. I'm just try not to delay you too much from having a go at doing it yourself. So just hold, so you see that, see how that, even if we ironed it, that, that seam allowance there is just going to be flapping around. Whereas if we just put a couple of stitches in on the existing seam edge, take off some of those threads, make it nice and neat, then you'll see it just flattens it off a bit and just holds it down. Oh, threads, sorry. Yep, just holds it down. So let's do the same again here. So I'm just going to push those seam allowances to the back, hold the dress out of the way. And then literally just try and mimic where your existing seam edge is and it will be almost invisible. And literally that's all you need just to hold those edges down. And it will just make it just look a little bit neater from the inside. It's frame just showing that and that's it. Okay. So that's just holding that down now and just makes that look a lot neater. So what I'm going to do now is take this over to the ironing board. I'm going to iron around my neckline to make sure that's all nice and straight. I'm going to iron these seam allowances flat and towards the back of the dress. And then we are going to then turn up a quarter of an inch and another quarter of an inch on the hem, just like this, and press it. And then I'll be able to just stitch that down. Um, and I'll pop back at that point and we'll just stitch the hem down together and then we'll move on to the bow. But yeah, it's coming together nicely, folks, isn't it? It's going to look lovely. And I'm, I'm quite pleased with that facing edge. I think that looks quite nice and it doesn't feel half as fiddly as it might have been with the bias. But let me know in the comments, have you made this dress already? Have you tried using the um, bias binding method, that the collar method that's in the... Um, book already there's no pictures of the actual collar itself and when I've looked at the dress I can't see that there's an actual collar itself so I think this is a really workable alternative to that so hopefully you agree so just a quick tip if you're trying to um, iron little garments like this um, especially things like side seams. If you've got a either a rolled up towel again you'd, I'm, I'm a fan of not trying to get you to buy too many um, um, gadgets and things but a sleeve roll is really handy to have in your sewing kit you can get these on um, Amazon and other um, sites um, but yeah it's just it's called a sleeve roll but what it does is it means that you can actually feed that inside the dress or whatever it is that you're making as long as it's not too narrow 
um, otherwise you can just use a roll up flannel if you need to and then it then gives you a nice edge then to be able to press with your iron and to do that same with way with doing the hem what I'm just doing now is I've just folded this up here I'm just going to then tuck the end into the hem and I'm just going to then just work round pressing just a small amount at a time I have to worry about so we're all the way around now so I'm just going to fold it back on itself again to the edge and then press again I'm just trying not to take too much because I don't want Luna in a mini dress do we So hopefully you can see that the seam roll just makes it nice and easy just to be able to work on a small section of the dress at a time, watching your fingers. Don't want any trips to hospital with burnt fingers. Um, and it just enables you just to turn up that hem. And if you wanted to, I suppose, on the hem, this is where you can embellish it. You don't have to put the big bow on the front. You can put some buttons, you can put some ribbon on the bottom, you can put some lace, mini pom-poms. You know, you, you can personalise these dresses however you like once you've got your basic, basic pattern and you know how you're making it. So I'm going to just take that all the way around just to hold that down. Back to the beginning again. So let's just take this to the sewing machine now and we're just going to sew that, that hem edge. Oops take it out of here just going to sew that hem edge close to this point just here and just sew that all the way around if you're sewing a small hem like here or around a sleeve cuff or what have you on a, on a full size garment don't forget that you can always remove the um, bottom of your sewing machine like that and then feed your hem onto the edge of your fabric like this I'm going to move my machine needle over again just to make that nice and easy to follow and then I'm starting at the centre back, make sure I am. That's where I'm going to have the stitches start and finish. And make sure that you've got your hems of your placket, you know, where it's overlapped, fault sitting right as well. Reverse back. And I've not pinned it, but I'm just going to just, because it's been folded, that um, pressed, I'm just going to just fold it just gently and we're just gonna you can pin it if you like but I'd pin it at right angles to your to your hem help it a little bit at the side point if it needs to go slowly because otherwise if you tug on it you're going to break your needle because you'll bend that needle won't you out of where it's supposed to be Obviously, you can hand stitch your hem if you wish to as well. All acceptable finishes. It's going to be a sweet little dress, this is, isn't it, when it's all finished? So I'm just helping this through the machine just to lie flat, and that's just taking out any of the curve that it might have cropped up because of the difference as I said before I'll take these threads off here now and I'll make sure that that's lying flat at the back as well don't want to take too much of the hem otherwise it'll be uneven got our hem nicely sewn so let's just turn this around the right way around so we can see what we have now and of course this dress pretty much is made by the embellishment of the bow isn't it really um, on the back here we're going to put a little press, press stud just on the placket you know we've got the overlapping placket little press stud at the top there and then a little button to hide it at the top so we'll do that in a in a bit but for now I'm going to move on to doing our um, bow and then we'll be able to see the bow okay so the next piece we've got then now to work on the bow. So we take our uh, pin out, we've cut one of these on the fold, so it's a nice long bow. And the first thing we're going to do is offer both sides up to each other, one over the top of the other. And then we are going to pin this 
so that it then we can sew it in half. So take it to your sew to your ironing board. Probably be easiest first. Let me just press this. So what I'm going to do is just fold it directly on top of itself, and then just press it in half to start it off. That'll make sure that it just stays nice on edge with the squirt of steam. So just iron this in half, and because it sits so nicely together, I'm not going to bother pinning it all the way along, but I've just left some pins in just to remind me to leave a gap, and I've left a gap of two inches. Um, yeah, that should do nicely. And so what I'm going to do now is just sew this down. So I'll start on the shorter edge first, make sure my stitch is at the right point, and quarter of an inch again on here. And I'm just going to back tack at the start and finish because that'll just reinforce the edges when we just turn this the right way around. So I've got the right sides of the fabric together. So come to the corner and we're going to put our needle down in our work, lift our presser foot and then we can pivot to the edge. And just reinforce that edge. Oh, doesn't like that, does it? So just be careful when you're reinforcing the edge, just make sure you can get it to stay straight. Mine will do, so that's, I'm gonna, not going to unpick it and do it again, because that's just going to stay straight like that. And then I'm going to then do the other side. So I'm just going to oh, take those threads off. Nice. Move this pin around the other way, because I've turned it upside down to save the other edge. pressed quite on top of each other but I'm just going to take it off to the to a point. It's a bit red, wasn't it? Up. Okay so what we're going to do now is we are going to cut our threads off and I'm going to just trim off the edge here so I'm going to take that off straight away at the edge there not through the stitches just at the edge and a little bit off the edge there because that's that can fold together and again, just at this point here. So just don't take it straight off, just take it a bit of a generous kind of diagonal line. And that will help that sit and not get too bulky in those corners. And then what we need to do is turn this around. And you can use the end of a pen, you can use a chopstick, you can use a knitting needle. Knitting needles are really good for getting the edges of these turned around. Or you can have or you might have a turning tool. I know quite a few of my friends have got a turning tool. So again, just push this through the opening that we left open. And I think that on this one we don't have to go round and top stitch. So I can use the blunt end just to push that through towards the end just don't push too hard otherwise you will push through your bow and create a hole and that would be a real shame especially if you've not got much fabric left okay so once you've got your main bit through you can then turn your knitting needle around and then gently just coax the edge of that point out just nice and gently so you want a nice little sharp point and this and again there in that corner look can you see how that's helped line nice and flat. Let's go down and do the other end here. So I say just a little bit of twisting and a little bit of poking but not too much. You don't want to damage that point. And again just run your knitting needle across that seam and it'll just help it stay out. So again run that the point of your knitting needle along the edge of the fabric and it just helps it come out to a nice edge. And again here, just going to put this along the edge here, and then we're going to take this to the ironing board and I'm just going to press this flat. And when you press it flat, just make sure that the edges that you've left open, which are, where are they for me, here look, 
just make sure that they are tucked in and pressed flat at the same as your seam allowance that you had for your actual seam for sewing your bow. If you just twist the, your fingers and you can just roll the, roll the edges out and you want that stitch in line right on the edge, a bit of thread there, um, stitch in line there right on the edge all the way along and that'll make sure you've got your uniform size and shape then for your bow. So again let's do one of those knots, three wraps round and then just pull it through and then snip off the end of excess of the fabric with the thread and then I always just start a little bit, find the edge of where the stitching starts and I usually just poke my needle through a couple of, about half a centimetre past that and then I'm just going to take a little bite of one side, oops, doesn't want to work. And then a little bite of the other side. So we're going through. I probably could do my glasses on now. So yeah, just a little slip stitch either side. And we'll just close up this edge as we work along it. And that should be invisible. doesn't take long does it just to do a little bit of hand stitching and sometimes it's quite therapeutic isn't it so I hope everybody's having a good day I hope you're enjoying this um, sew along I hope that I'm giving you confidence to have a go at sewing your own as I say let me know what you think about the facing finishing method on the um, on the in the comments below if you don't mind and see if you like it or not as I say if you've got an overlocker you could overlock the edge of the facing if you wanted we I've just zigzagged it now or if you've not got um, a zigzag on your machine perhaps you're sewing on a vintage machine or your hand sewing you could also use a pinked edge couldn't you as well just to as I did in one of my skill builder videos talked about a pinked edge seam finish so you can always use that as well so there's, there's usually more than one way of doing things some things you're, you're best to follow the tried and trusted but other ways you can just vary it and I think sometimes it's just adapting those techniques that you learn to the garment that you're making. All strings to our bow well, aren't they? As you can see that's just sitting just nicely now, just closing that up. Doesn't take long. Just a little thread there, let's just tuck that in. That's it. And I just go usually a couple of mil past the opening. Just make sure that you, you pull it to make sure that it's lying nice and flat. This one is. And just a couple of stitches past the opening. So then you've got not got any risk then of your stitches popping. So just keep doing a little bit either side. And then once you've done a couple of stitches in place, like a bit of a lock stitch if you like, then you can just poke your thread and needle in through between both sides of the of the bow so it's not seen on either side out the other side and that leaves it and pull it slightly and then when you snip it that thread gets pulled straight into the work and you don't see it so there we go so that's our tie so let's put that down on our table now Sarah has got it with the points facing down and we've got some measurements to do here so let's get my tape measure so First one from the point, we need eight centimetres. So let's put eight centimetres here, and we're gonna put a pin. And then another four centimetres, and we're going to put another pin. That one's not very straight, let's put the, make sure the pins are straight. So we've got one at eight centimetres, one another four centimetres, then we want another eight centimetres. And then another four centimetres. Okay, 
So we've got one bit longer than the other, but that looks like that should be right according to the picture. So I'm just following the instructions just here as to what we have to do. And it's going to tell us how to fold it. So we're going to use that as a fold line. So that's going to go to the outside edge there. So this first eight centimetre pin's coming into the middle. And then that's going to be the other fold edge. And that other pin there is going to go into the middle there. So that's going to be how that sews there. So and then we've got to put two rows of stitch. I'm going to take out these, these at four centimetres and just put them through the edges just there. Just to remind me where we are. And they should be touching on the back here. So it's all to make the bow equal. So the folds are touching on the back. There we go. So there we've got our, uh, so we've got a, a little loop there for the bow and a loop there. And the two bits at the back there, I've just taken the pins out on the fold and that's just holding that still. So now we're just going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew down here and then down this one. As I say, just follow the, gu the um, guide in the book and you'll be able to see what you're supposed to be doing. Let me just turn these pins around because that'll make it easier for me to sew it. Such a sweet little bow this one is as well, isn't it? You could do this with a hair bow, couldn't you, for a child as well, if you've got a matching hair bow to your dress for Luna Lapin. It'd be lovely on a little clip. So one stitch from the one, that's fine. So let's put those the stitches in to start, take my pin out because I know where we are now. I'm going to reverse. And then take this one out, slip through the threads. And let's do the other side as well. So again, just a couple of stitches missing the pin just to hold it in place. I haven't got my needle in my work, so that seems like it's gone a little bit further forward. So let's use my ball and that will hopefully keep it all lined up. Get that out of there. Step through our threads. So we've got the start of our bow. So we've got two flaps here, one in here, and then the two folds in together. Being as I didn't do as I was told. Just anchor my threads down here first. Sometimes it's difficult, isn't it, to um, interpret the written word. I know Sarah will have taken a lot of time to try and get this as clear as possible and have tested, pattern tested the um, the details and what have you. Sometimes it's just difficult to interpret, isn't it? Which is why these videos can be so helpful for everybody, can't they? Just so that you can visually see what's happening. Right, so this here then needs to be gathered up together. So I'm just going to pull on those threads so it makes the bow. And then I'm going to just put a couple of stitches through just to hold that in place. Just need to just hold it in place for now because we'll be sewing it over the top again in a minute. Oh, it's quite stiff, isn't it, to get it through? So that will do for now. Okay, so before we, so we've got to this stage here where we've just gathered the centre, we've stitched those down so we've got the loops down and we've just gathered those centre there and we've got one side longer than the other. That is exactly right how it's supposed to be. What I just want you to do is have a look on the picture of the book and let me just see if I can see one. Yeah, let me just show you on this one here. This might be a better picture. Hopefully there's not going to be too much glare on the TV, on the screen. We've got your two loops here and you've got a very flat centre piece here. Okay, that's the width of the tie. Also, this tie here has got a fold in it just here. 
and the one at the back is flat and is slightly longer than the other one. So I was just, this is take two of what I was trying to do for the bow. So if you're, I was trying to get them both the same length, but it doesn't look as if they're supposed to be on the picture because this one here is slightly shorter. If we carried that across, look, that would, that's slightly shorter than this one. So it's always a good idea to have a look at, back at the picture. So we can actually see then that we were probably on the right lines, but we need to have a fold in this one here just to fold it back. And then this one here goes straight down. So let's have a look and see if we can get this done again because... I've tried once and it didn't want to go right for me, so I've um, I've come back to it again. If it's if you're ready for a cup of tea after doing the dress and your patients or somebody's needing your attention, go and get them sorted first and then come back to me and we'll do this together afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold this, um, the long one, we're going to fold it down over the front, take it over the back, but before we fasten that one down, we're going to pull this one down first. Right, okay, I've got it. Okay, so first of all, turn it over so you've got the um, shorter side in your left hand. You're then going to fold this bow across at a right angle here. So you've got your diagonal line here and a right angle here. And wrap it round to the front. To the to, Sorry, so it's hanging flat down. Okay, over the front. You're then going to take this one here and fold it to right angle. And then you're then going to pull this up, the long one, finish off put, wrapping it round to the front and pull it down like that. Okay, if you are inserting the badge, then feel, feed your badge through here first before you then secure this down. Because when we turn this over, there we go, we've got our bow. And that will then look the same as the one. One side is slightly longer than the other and that's how it's supposed to be. So then what I would suggest you do is just take your needle and thread and we're just going to bury the knot in the in the corner up here somewhere. Just tuck that end of the thread in and then I'm just going to go in through one side only of the bow, of the loop of the bow I'm just going to just do some stitches down here just to hold this all together. So rewind the video if you need to see how to do this. Being as this is my second attempt, I'm not taking my fingers off this now until it's sewn into place. But you can rewind the video as many times as you need in order to hopefully get it. If you get stuck, then let me know. I always try to help if I can. I'm just going to fold this one back now and just put some stitches along the bottom here just to hold that together. Hold it all in place for little fingers that are playing with these or when they're on your shelf. You never know, they might come out and play at night time, mightn't they, by themselves? Hold that one back as well, just so that we can get some stitches along the front and that'll just secure these in place. So I'm just folding those loops out of the way just whilst we just secure this together. Just a couple of stitches just there. Then when we pull those forward to the front, so I'm going to put my th thread through to the back of the work now because we're going to sew this onto the dress. So just hide that. So there we've got our bow all nicely sewn. So if we reach for our dress, it's covered in threads, get rid of some of those. So if we put our shoulder seams together, we're going to then identify where the centre front of our dress is. So shoulder seams together. That's there, and that then gives us this point here, which is for the centre of the bow. So the centre of the bow there is going to fit right on the top there. And I'm just going to then, use my needle and thread, I want to put, actually I want to put a couple of pins in just to hold this to, into place. So that will just give us an extra anchor point, won't it? Okay, so I've just got my pins on there. Just make sure you're happy with how that's sitting. It's not twisted. I'm happy with that. 
And then what we're going to do now is just fold these loops of the bow back and now we can just sew the bow onto the front of the dress. If you're using the pin, you'll already have sewn the pin onto the dress, sorry, onto your bow. And so you won't need to do this stitch step because you will just then, you'll have a detachable bow that you'll then be able to just to fix on if you use the remake kit from Cool Crafting. Oops, sorry, might not be on camera. So just make sure this is nice and secure. I've only got one thread at the moment, but I think I'm going to double that up. To make sure I am going through the facing as well on the inside. That'll help hold it down anyway, won't it? You might have a bias edge on your dress, so don't worry if you have, that's fine. You just keep doing what you're doing. Take that pin out now, it's done its job. Feels nice and secure. If you wanted to, you could put a little stitch in just to hold the loop back. I don't think I need to on mine, but you could if you wanted to. And then when you're happy that side secured on, I'm going to just pass the needle through the bow to the other side. I've got a loop there, a thread that tails off, I don't need that. And then I'm going to fold this side of the bow back to expose the everything else. And now I'm going to go through all of these edges to make sure this is secured down nice and neatly. Just take your time with this bit because obviously if you've got coordinating thread you're not going to be able to see your stitches anyway hopefully. But again we want it all to be as nice and neat as possible don't we and get a good finish. That's what we're all trying to achieve isn't it. And practice makes perfect as well so your hand stitching might not be perfect straight away but just keep at it. Don't, don't think oh I can't do that. Just keep having a go. And it will it will get neater over time. I've been sewing for a long time now, but it does, and I'm sure a lot of you have as well. But if you're new to sewing, then just remember these are all skills that you learn over time. And you will get quicker and you will get neater as time goes on. And as you can see, that's not too bad on the back there for that being stitched on the back there. I don't think anybody would object to that. So yeah, so we just keep on sewing this down to, to the dress until we're at a, happy with it, that it's on there. And then I'm just going to do a few stitches in place just here and that will just cast off my thread for me. The thing that we've got to do then, folks, is just to sew on our button. Just move that out of the way so you can have a look at that. So that's our bow tight, sewn nicely onto our dress. And all we've got to do now is just do our little press stud and our button to hide that and our dress is finished. So let me just go and have a look at my button box and see what we can have on the back here and our press studs and then I'll come back to you and we'll finish this off. Okay, so we're on the homeward stretch now. We've got our bow sewn onto the front of our dress. We've got the hems all done, shoulder um, sleeves in and the um, cuffs on the sleeves all done nicely. So now we just need to finish off the back here. So we're just trying to work out what we're going to do in buttons wise. I've got two press studs. I think you'll be familiar with these, most people are. So we're just gonna put a couple of little mini press studs on the bottom, uh, on the back of here. Um, the dress, the pattern calls for two. These are size five mil, size zero, 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 if you need to get those. Um, and so I've got two of those ready and lined up, ready to go. But on the top, I want to have a button just showing. Now I've got some little buttons here that I've, purchased before that I could use but I'm just not sure if they're just a little bit too small we could have the blue or the grey yeah I'm let me just try a different size because I'm just wondering if they're a little bit too small they might be just be perfect for for lunar eyes actually 
Hold on one second. Well, we probably wouldn't put the pink on his eyes, but the other colours would be okay. Just put those away for in, in there. Keep those safe. But I have got a box of buttons. And in here, there's some either some very nice little buttons like that. That could look quite nice on the back there. Oh, I like that size better, I think. Um, that one's a little bit big, maybe. I'm wanting that's going to go flat as well, I think. So let me just have a quick look through here, see what I can find. Shirt button wise. Well, that's quite pretty. Like those. Isn't it fun, though? Just trying. This bit's always fun, isn't it? Just trying to match up the what you actually want in terms of your buttons on the back. Oh, that one's quite sweet too. Quite vintage, isn't it, that one? We've all had cards in the past with those buttons on. Just trying, oh, there's another one there. So I'm just trying to decide which button to have. I like the look of these little ones. But I think they're going to, by the time we've got the pressed underneath, I think they're going to be too proud. So I think I'm probably going to go with those ones there because they'll be nice and flat. So I think those are going to be mine, the ones that I'm going to use. So I think that will be the, a good idea for those. So what I'm going to do is I am going to sew my pressed on first. And I'm going to sew one at the top just here. And the way that I do that is they've got these little um, gaps here that the needle can go through. So make sure your needle will go through. That one will if I twist it the right way round, which is fine. Um, snip off my threads at the end of my needle here, at the end of my knot, because that can sit underneath there. And then if we hold that in place like that, I can take a little, oops, don't lose it, Claire. We've only got a few left. I tried to find this size in Spain and I can't find them at the moment. The Mertheria that I went to, which is like the haberdashery shop, had only got bigger ones. So I need to try and find some of those because I want this, this nice small size. So I'm going to just position the knot underneath the centre of, of the press stud and then holding it in place with your fingernail or your finger, I'm just going to take I usually take three stitches, I think, on each side. One, my thread is double. It's a little scoop of the dress fabric. Thread's getting tangled up. One, two, three on there. And then what to do is I just travel behind the fabric, in the fabric, just one side. So I'm just trying to go through just one side of the fabric, not through two. And then I'm just going to do another three stitches just here. Because these aren't don't need too much fabric to go on them. You could use poppers as well if you've got poppers. You could use those like cam snap type, I think they're also called, little poppers. One, two, three stitches there. And then don't have to hold on to it quite so tightly now and then travel along so this actually oops sorry I'm making the camera wobble aren't I there's three three holes sorry four holes in the back one three there and then what I'm going to do then is to fasten the thread off I'm just going to travel underneath the press stud out to the edge just press down or use a thimble if you need to I'm just going to go backwards and forwards a couple of times and that should just keep that thread inside and not let it come out to the outside or just to unravel. There we go. Okay. I'll show you how I just sew one of these on in the button and then I can go off and do the other one. You don't need to see me do both, do you? Okay, so let's do another knot on here. Take the ends off because they're going to stick out anyway. And then we're going to go for the corresponding part of the snap. And then this time I can actually bury my knot underneath the facing because the facing is just proud slightly. 
Let's just bring that up close to the edge there. Yeah, that should be fine. Thread the needle through the snap and then at least it's held on and then I can just hold it on in place with my fingernail and again I'm going to do three stitches on each side to hold this one in place too three. and obviously you can do more than three if you want to if you think if yours is going to a little one and you want to make sure that it's very securely tied on there then you can do that so then I mean that's quite neat you don't have to put a button at the back if you don't want to but I'm just going to put one on just to be decorative so I'm going to go back through my to the front of my garment and thread the button onto the needle in and out and then position it pretty much on top if I can. Now because it's loose at the moment I can take a stitch across like that so just be aware of whether you want your, your holes going side to side or up down because that it's nice to have them both the same way if you can remember to do that. So then I can go thread it up through here. So it's a bit of it, don't do it all in one go. And then out again. The other side, I have pulled it slightly tighter now as well, so it sits flatter. It's better. Oh, got a little loop in the thread. In the centre of the button just there, look. So let's see if we can get rid of that. Oops, not trying to catch that piece of fabric, that's it. And then again, across and through fabric at the back and this is just the way that I sew them when I've got something on the other side so I can't do a stab stitch all the way through because obviously the um, press studs in the way so I can just fiddle it backwards and forwards like this as it gets tighter then it does make maneuverability a little bit more difficult but you'll get the gist and get the idea And here's our lovely Luna, all in her lovely dress. That neckline is sitting really nicely. I'm really pleased with how that um, facing has turned out. And as I say, it's plenty of room in for her. Just see the end of her French knickers. They're a little bit long for her because um, I didn't hem that up. But actually, it's quite sweet seeing that little pop of lace. So there we go. She's still got her ballet shoes on. I think I need to do a video about how to make shoes, don't I, so that she doesn't have to wear ballet shoes all the time. Um, but for now, I'm really pleased with her, so I hope you are too. I'm just going to just do another video quickly at the bottom of, just to recap on how to sew a facing again, to draft a facing for your pattern, because that's a pattern piece you'll have to draw yourself. Um, but hopefully you'll agree that Luna looks very dapper in her, in her new little t-shirt dress. And I hope you enjoy making your own. See you soon, everybody. Um, just stay on for the yoke, uh, for the facing video if you need that one. Okay, catch you soon. Okay, so this is a bit more of a detailed recap just for those who didn't quite understand how to do the facing. Um, you just need to find the pattern for the dress or the garment that you're working with. In this case, we're using the t-shirt dress and we have a front piece here and then we've got the back piece on the other page. Um, let me just bring you in a bit closer and then you'll be able to see what we're doing. But I've just got a pencil, some tracing paper and then the pattern pieces, the original pattern pieces. Okay, so all we need to do first is we're just going to give ourselves a bit of room because we're going to double this out. And what we're going to do now is just put our pattern piece onto our, sorry, tracing paper on top of our pattern piece. And we're going to, to copy it across this top shoulder line here. And we're going to trace across the neckline edge, which is here. And we're just going to put a little mark where that fold is. And then we're then going to use, you can either use a seam gauge or you can use your tape measure. Let me, oh, it's here. And I think that I did mine about an inch deep. So if you start off at this angle here with your tape measure at an inch, it's just shy of the shoulder seam, which is fine, and just put a mark. And then keep your edge of your tape measure along the edge of the neckline as you just move down and wrong place and just do a little mark and this is going to give you a little dotted line that matches the same curve so just keep that tape measure just at right angles to your pattern piece and you can trim this down if you think it's a bit if it's a bit big 
but it just gives you a bit of an idea as to how to do it. And this is the same for an adult or child's garment as well. You'd make a face in the same way. Okay, so here now we know how far we're going to go down. So we just go down to here. We need to remember to put down on the fold mark here. So this is a fold. So just write that down on there, okay? And this is the line that we're now going to cut out on, which is going to make our front facing for us. Oops, make that a nice neat line when you do it, not scruffy like mine. And then we need to write on it as well, front facing. Okay, cut one, okay. So this is our front facing. So this is the fold, which is the center edge. So we can cut this out now and that's going to be our front facing. Now we're going to do the same with the back piece here. And all we do again is we just offer our, the pattern, piece of paper up to our pattern. We're going to draw along that shoulder line and we're going to draw all the way along the edge of this um, neck edge, back neck edge. And then we're going to draw down here as well. And then we're going to get our tape measure again. And we're just going to measure down here an inch, start off with. And we just move our tape measure across and just do a little line. So I'm keeping the edge of the tape measure on the edge of the pattern piece and just keep marking that all the way around. And as you start to curve round, make sure you curve round as well pivot it round and it should just be about just shy of so you can see the dotted line so it's taking off the rest of this we don't need the rest of this so then you just draw your dots together and if you need to write anything on it do that okay and this is here's the is the um center back oh my writing scruffy and this here is the neck Okay, so that there gives us our two pieces. So this one here is cut two, and that's back facing. So we'll write on it what it is. So all you do then is you're just going to then cut these out. Oops, sorry, making everything wobble. I just rough cut them out first before I put them on my fabric. And then when we're actually, move this book out of the way. And then when we're sewing these together, this is the center front, which will be cut on the fold, um, center back, which will be there. And then we've got the front there on the fold. So when we're sewing these together, those two will overlap by the quarter of an inch and that will start to give us the facing. So if you wanted to, no, let's keep it simple. So let's do it that way. And then you've got the, you just join those at the shoulder edge, like I do in the video. Cut this one on the fold here, you only need one of that one, that's the front facing, and cut two of those. Make sure that your grain line is going up and down this way, on this way for the grain. And then that will then give you those pattern pieces then to then join together. So that's your centre back. It'll be a bit too long, but that's fine. Like we did in the video, we just cut it off. But then these two here will be put on top of each other like that, right sides together. Use a pin to mimic where the seam allowance is. And then when that folds out, that will give you one half of your facing because the other half will be on here and then you'll put the other back on there. And then you can lie it against your dress and you'll be able to sew round it and attach your facing. I hope that makes sense everybody anyway and I hope you like this way of doing it too. Um, for me, I think it, it does make it slightly easier. Um, so hopefully it does for you too. Have a great day everybody. So I hope you've enjoyed sewing um, Luna's t-shirt dress along with me today. Um, I do have a range of videos on my YouTube channel and if you've liked this one, you like my manner, um, you like the way that I show you how I do things, then please please consider subscribing, um, clicking the like button as well um, and perhaps leaving me a comment. I do answer all of them so it is nice to get the comments and just see how, it, um, how, how the video met your needs um, as long as it did hopefully um, I'm really pleased with the dress that we've done today and there'll be lots more in the um, in the 
coming weeks and months as well. The other thing that I've done recently is I've launched my Skill Builder series of videos. So you'll see those start to build up. They're just short clips that just talk about regular sewing terms that you might have heard but might not be familiar with, or you might not quite fully understand exactly how it can elevate your sewing. So if you've got the time, do pop along and have a look at those. And um, again, let me know what you think. And if you do like what I do on my channel, then, then please do subscribe. It's lovely to have you along. Um, and I do like to chat along with my subscribers as well as um, as we're doing the videos and ask, asking they ask questions and, and make suggestions for future videos so have a great day everybody and thank you for joining me take care bye